Why it's going to be a no-go for snow. Why the ladies are so loquacious. Please don't let the permafrost melt and failing on fighting the flu on today's Daily Orbit. Hello and welcome to the Daily Orbit. I'm Emerald Robinson. Looks like snow's about to take a long vacation. Where will the snow go? To the North and South Poles. I know you're thinking there's already snow there, but a new climate model predicts that increasing carbon dioxide levels will lead to less snowfall across the globe, including the United States over the next 100 years. But the polar regions and Earth's highest altitudes will receive more snow over the next century, according to the model. In the U.S., the hardest hit, or, well, not hit, actually, will be the northeastern coast and the mountainous regions of the west. That's not good, as a lot of regions rely on snowmelt for fresh water. Oh, man, that means less fresh powder at the slopes. <sighs> so, I went to the store and I was like, I saw the cutest top, and oh, my God. That's probably where you guys start tuning out, right? <laughs> Why do women talk so much more than men? Well, a new study says that may be because of a protein in the brain called FOXP2. This protein has been linked to being talkative, and women have more of this protein in their brains than men. Scientists say this could explain why women are more verbal than men, as our brains were designed with communication in mind. So, I guess it's not your fault, boys, that you just suck at communication. And not long ago, we talked about the dangers of the thawing permafrost in the Arctic, and looks like we have another region to worry about. According to scientists, the permafrost in Siberia is in danger as well. Researchers said that a global temperature rise of 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit could thaw the ground over a large area of Siberia. If this does occur, 1,000 gigatons of carbon dioxide and methane would be dished out into the atmosphere. Scientists base their findings on stalactites and stalagmites in caves across Siberia, which tell the history of melting. If the temperature increases and this thawing does occur, adjoining regions like Mongolia's Gobi Desert will also see major changes. And like Jennifer Hudson, satellites keep getting slimmer. The smallest telescope in the world is ready to be launched. The telescope satellite was designed, assembled, and deployed quickly and relatively cheaply by the University of Toronto's Space Flight Laboratory. Bright satellites weigh less than 15 pounds and will be observing the brightness of stars. Similar nano satellites have been used to monitor the Earth, but this is the first mission intended for astronomy. It won't take beautiful pictures like the Hubble telescope that weighs over 24,000 pounds, but it will focus its sight on the brightest stars in the sky. And because of their small size, they don't require their own rocket to launch into orbit. Rather, they can piggyback on any available rocket. Scientists say this ease and affordability will make it more feasible for many universities to put one in orbit. Got the vaccine and still got the flu? What's up with that? Well, if so, you're not the only one. Looks like this year's flu outsmarted the vaccine, especially in those over 65. The vaccine translated to 56% lower chance of seeking treatment for the flu, but only 27% in those over 65. The Centers for Disease Control said that the vaccine did still prevent many hospitalizations and deaths, but that we obviously need a new and better one than what we have now. Hmm. This flu season's hospitalization and death rates have been near a record high, leaving the CDC advisory committee, quote, scratching their heads. Can't you just see a bunch of people in lab coats being like, hmm, that darn flu did it again. Foiled. And that's it for the Daily Orbit. We'll see you tomorrow, Orbiters.